Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another video. This one is on live fire tables or open fire grills. Got a few different names, uh, but the concept is generally the same. Uh, so let's take a look at this unique style of cooking right now. I've got some chapter times for you. Um, if you want to skip ahead, go to a certain point in the video, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. Helps me out a lot. So thank you for that. All right, and we're going to start off with our map section. Now, I like to show maps because your proximity to some of these builders may change the price in what you pay for shipping. So let's take a quick look. Uh, Texas, where this uh, trend, I think, comes from. We've got two options. Royal Barbecue Fabrications right there near Dallas. And then also we've got Mill Scale uh, in Lockhart, Texas. They're close to San Antonio. If we go to the southeast, we've got uh, the Metal Guys or TMG Pits out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Up in the Midwest, we have Steel Belly Barbecue out of Algona, Wisconsin, uh, near Green Bay. And then all the way in the northeast, we've got Humphreys Barbecue in southern maine a pretty widespread here of, of places in the eastern part of the country now let's answer what is a live fire table so it's going to be a steel table basin right so it holds in you know the ashes and whatever with the basin walls for cooking argentinian style barbecue now, Argentinian style barbecue is a form of cooking usually over coals. So you burn the wood down into coals. That's the main thing. And I actually did um, a gaucho grill episode, specifically looking at the El Bandito grills. If you want to check that out, I look at the difference between a gaucho grill and a Santa Maria style grill in that episode. Um, but these live fire tables are a little bit different. This one here is from Mill Scale, and we're going to see them in a second, too. Okay, so Argentinian-style barbecue in which the cooking implements can be moved around the table are removed as needed. Sometimes things can be added on uh, from other Argentinian styles, uh, like the cross. We're going to see that, too. So really, it's an exciting style. Let's ask a different question now. Why live fire tables? They bring cooking up from the ground level to standing height. So a lot of this gaucho style cooking in Argentina was, you know, they were down on the ground with a fire on the ground. This just sort of brings it up. Um, so it's a little bit more comfortable for the people doing it. All right. They contain fire in such a way that doesn't ruin the yard. Right. So, you know, those coals, the fire is going to burn up your grass. So having it up higher is better that way, too. And then uh, live fire tables are one of the most versatile of Argentinian style cooking apparatus. So a lot of these parillas, these gaucho grills, you know, they're built with just the grill there. Um, and this is you can move stuff around. The plancha can be here. You can put it, you know, the grill there. You can move the coals here or there. Just whatever you want to do on this table, it's just all in. So that's. That's why live fire tables. All right. What am I not covering? So I already talked about the gaucho grills. That grill is just sort of stationary. It's right there. You know, you move the, the coals to it, and that's what the grill is. Now, you've got something like these Santa Maria grills. I've got one from Tagwood Barbecue down here for 7000 And you can see that it has the cross or the, you know, that thing that you put the whole animal in. So there are some like crossover elements. You see, it's got the uh, traditional sort of Santa Maria style grill on the other side. So, you know, there, there are some forms that are similar, but different. But Santa Maria grills are not what we're looking at here. Then there's these other live fire tables that are made outside the country. Okay. So this one from Fuegos, Texas, the Odin Pro. Recently came up on um, a series from Jeremy Yoder and his Mad Scientist Barbecue channel. They are made in Argentina. 
And there's, you know, Tagwood also made in Argentina. They're more authentic in a certain way, but they also have to be shipped here. So that changes in a certain degree how they're engineered and made. Um, so, you know, if you actually went down to Argentina, would you see these grills or would you see ones like the ones that we have built here welded together you know and maybe if you're from argentina you can comment below and tell us what they have down there so that's what i'm thinking but you know if you do want something that's foreign made this rollo is very inexpensive 790 uh for something that is sort of like a, a live fire table there um, the Odin Pro, quite a bit more expensive, uh, $4,155. That includes shipping, I think. But um, we're going to see another slide quite a bit later on uh, about weight that I think is going to show you why um, these domestically made American uh, examples are better overall. But we're going to start off with our um, discussion of these individual pit makers with the metal guys. I am doing this in the order of lowest cost. So this coal mine for $2,199 is the cheapest uh, example. You can see that it comes with that burn box, two griddle tables, and two grill tables. Now, several of these sites, when you go and look at what they have they give you examples that are not the base model and i'm trying my best to show you what comes with the base model you know they show you the price of the base model but then you they show you a different grill and this is is the base model here and this is the picture on the right hand side that you're going to see more the one with the cage the cage is an extra one thousand five hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents almost doubling the cost. Uh, you see that it's got that rotisserie mount um, as part of the cage. So from those holdings up, up top, you can uh, you know lower down chains with hooks and meat. So you can cook over those. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hang any other sorts of grates from that. Um, but the rotisserie mount is there, and I imagine that they have or sell a rotisserie that goes with this. Should have gotten a price for that. I didn't. So, too bad there. Now, they do have a hanging oven here, and that hanging oven is $449.99. Uh, I imagine that you're able to shovel some coals in there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's inside their oven or exactly how it's made or what they intend to cook be nice if you could cook some pizza in there. Um, now, here we do have an additional grate or griddle. So it can be either one for $149.99. And it hangs on that bar that I believe is part of the rotisserie mount. You do see some uh, grates up here in the, uh, the rolling smoke example. Um, so definitely the metal guys, they are a custom shop. And they will do pretty much whatever you want them to do or make. So um, just keep that in mind uh, when you're making these sort of selections is that these are just examples of their work. The base model is just a base and you can really do uh, whatever your imagination uh, guides you to and they accept to make. All right, and here are a few accessories that might be helpful with the live fire table. Got a bacon press there for $49.99. Uh, they've got a burger press for $39.99 and a charcoal chimney for $99.99 called the torch. All right, and here we have Royal Barbecue Fabrication. And um, I actually edited out some things on this picture, which is why it kind of looks wonky in the back. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I wanted to show you what you actually get for $2,200. So this is the base model. You get that liftable grate um, there. So you can lift the grate off. I think you can move it maybe back and forward. Not entirely sure about that. But that's, you know, for cooking. You know, maybe you get your, your coals down there first, burn down some wood, and then put the grate in and then cook over that. Um, it has casters, two fixed, two swivel. It's got, you know, lower shelf area. And that's what you get for $2,200. And now 
So you, this is the same picture, but not edited. And you get a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is the picture, you know, they show on the website. The cage itself is $350. Log burner, $250. Uh, the large hanging grate, um, that's going to be $115 each. Small hanging grate, $85 each. So, you know, you, you take a look at this picture and all of a sudden uh, the price is up by like another third, right? So, now they do have quite a few accessories here from Royal Barbecue. Um, those chimneys, I believe, are $95 each, regular up top, the Texas style on the bottom. So, they use their laser cutter to good, good effect and have some different designs. Uh, for the burger press, the same thing. Uh, they've got the flame there, the longhorn below, Florida up top, and Texas uh, below that, all for $45. If you want to give them a custom design, $55, so another another $10. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, we've got a steak or bacon press up there for $55. And you can get those done for custom another ten dollars as well get a different design to be cut in there for you all right and now we are on to humphrey's barbecue and uh their live fire table and basin is two thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars and this has got some interesting features so um for this price you get uh you know the stand there um the casters now they're only six inch casters and i don't actually think that these casters that we see in this picture are the six inch casters that it comes with i think they're bigger they look like eight inch casters to me so that's one thing to note now they say that the basin is removable and i don't think that is the case with anything else we've seen um you've got the brasero there that comes with it you know again it's for burning wood into coals for you to to sweep under where you're cooking uh you've got the brasero shelf so it's a shelf for the brasero um a fold down basin wall so you know you hook it up to keep that or you can fold it down and then you can just have better arm movement to to move your coals around actually like that that is something i don't think that we see on any of the other ones um if you actually look right below the bracero i think that there is some sort of little catch down there and if you look at the bottom left of this slide there's a lower basin clear out hole so that you can actually um sweep ash and maybe grease down into a bucket below all right, and now the add-on. So things keep getting interesting. So uh, if you want the cage, uh, their cage is left and right walls, $349 each. You can see how this uh, adds up pretty quickly. The back and top are $449 each. So all together, if you want this cage, it's going to be $1,596 altogether. Now that doesn't mean that you have to get everything, you know, you don't have to get the top certainly or the back, um, the sides you pretty much have to get uh, if you want those other two. So I imagine um, it looks nice all together, but you could go for just a few different parts. And interestingly enough for, for this one as well, I don't think anybody else has it like this. You can actually take the walls off, um, you, they hook in, so you have to buy these when you purchase this um, table so that they can make it so that they'll hook in. But you can actually take the walls off. It's better for transportation that way. Um, I don't know how often you're going to want to transport your table, but maybe you will, uh, you know, take it to maybe competitions, take it out to the lake house if you have one of those somewhere, you know, over to a friend's house. So it is one convenient option. Now, they have a plancha grill combo table over here. Uh, and you see that it, the 12 by 14 is $225. The 11 and a half by 21 is 279 And you see the grill up top. And then they just have a plate of steel that you lower down into it. Presto, it has turned into a plancha. 
Now, a plancha and a griddle, they're basically the same thing. Uh, I think that may just be what they call it down in Argentina. They do the same thing, look the same, they are the same. <laughs> All right, and so some more add-ons we have here. Um, now for the hanging shelves, right? The whole reason you get the, the cage parts, the walls and everything is so you can hang more stuff. Uh, you would need some of these hanging shelves. So that's $89 a piece. So they, they charge the same amount for each, each size. So any size, the three sizes are 10 by 10, 12 by 12 and 14 by 14. You know, whichever you think is gonna work best for what you're doing. Now the chain is $295 per foot. Um, that can change uh, depending, you know, call for, for the current amount. The hooks, uh, they sell on a page on the website. And these are the prices, $249, $299, and $349 for small, medium, and large. I imagine, you know, if you're hanging something from all the way from the top that you're going to want uh, at least a medium size hook, maybe large, you know, uh, large size hook. I wouldn't imagine that you'd hang like, you know, a chicken wing all the way from the top of that. So I think, I think the large size. All right. And here we have some accessories, uh, the small smash spatula. So they like to make these spatulas as well as smashers. That's $29.95. If you go down, uh, you see the large smash spatula. You can actually see it doing its spatula duties with, I believe those are mushrooms. So, you know, you can sort of scoop it up under. The uh, The idea of a, a smasher seems to be that it should have some weight, which seems in my mind sort of counterintuitive uh, to a spatula. But, you know, if it gives you enough uh, ability to push with force, uh, you know, and it's thin enough but still weighty enough, maybe it works. I don't know. This rib spatula up here, more center top, uh, for sixty nine ninety five, you can either get it orientated, uh, you know, to the side or to the back, and um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, it's another spatula. If we jump all the way to the bottom right, uh, heavy duty with cutting edge. So nineteen ninety nine. Wonder how sharp that spatula could be. Um, also fire brick. 649. We say that these things have steel bottoms, but fire bricks, they hold on to heat. You could line the whole thing. You could have a few in different places just to, you know, hold heat a little bit better, maybe near the Bracero. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, they've got this cast iron skillet for $39.99 up top. Uh, fire iron, trademark. Um, so yeah, some accessories from Humphreys. All right, and now Steel Belly Barbecue. This one is interesting. Apparently, they do catering up in Wisconsin. Um, and that seems to be most of what they do. Um, and this table, that's, that's what I saw on their website. They do uh, catering and they sell these tables. I, I wonder how many of them they have sold. Um, this is the only slide here because there's not a super lot on it. Um, for this $4,000, you can see that this table is a bit wider than some of the others we've seen so far. When we get to the charts, you'll you'll see that um, bear out there. So two grills, it looks like they're stacked on top of each other. Uh, hopefully you can take them apart. Burn basket over there, it seems quite sizable for a burn basket. And two planches. So... You know, it it looks like a good size table with the, the basic elements of the live fire table. Uh, could they provide anything else like a cage or something? I imagine so. You know, you could ask. Uh, I didn't ask, but you could ask. Uh, and if you're in their area, why not? And now we come to mill scale. Um, and I don't know the exact history of the introduction of this style of cooking to America. But I imagine mill scale may have played more of a part in, in that. Um, they've had these things and they've been selling them for a couple of years now. Uh, did they introduce this to America in, in a meaningful way? I don't know. Uh, I know that they were, you know, very much looking into uh, South American styles of cooking 
maybe before other people. But here is their four foot open fire grill for $5,275. It has all the usual suspects here, the log burner, the multi-level grill. Uh, I'd like to think for that multi-level grill that you can pull out those as shelves, but I don't actually know that that's true. I'm hoping so. Um, so then you have uh, a choice between two, either the plancha or the grill uh, of those little tables. And what we see there is two planchas. So, you know, I guess the idea is you're going to use the multi-level grill as a grill and the planchas as planchas. But you could get those tables as grills. And then they also have the open fire grill that's eight foot. So, you know, twice as large. They sell with that a multi-level grill. You get to choose two uh, planches or grills. Again, I think that they are larger for this one. So um, you'd have to ask about that, how much larger they are than the, the ones for the four foot. And, and then you get two log burners. Uh, so you can, you know, get coals from either side, right? And mill scale like they do, they have some of the most fun add-ons. Uh, the iron cross there. So that's 750. And... This Iron Cross thing, it is its own style of barbecue. Uh, you know, that people were sticking these things in the ground. Usually it's whole animal, right? You uh, hang these things up on a cross and you get uh, fire and, um, you know, some coals underneath. And you cook a whole animal that way. And you bend it down so that you can make the heat somewhat even with your positioning of the fire. Uh, this Asado Dome for $550 uh, is below that, and it's basically for hanging hooks. Now, all the examples that I've seen of this, they don't have the top cage. So this is if you want to hang stuff, but you didn't get the top cage, which, you know, if you have the eight foot grill, I think having the top cage is a little less something you do. And maybe this Asado Dome would be uh, what you'd have instead. So that upper rack assembly, if you do want it, is $1,040. For the 8-foot, it would be $1,300. Then you could hang your meat from that. Um, the back wall is $910. For a 6-foot section, it is um, $1,170. And on that back wall, you can hang these 16-inch swing grates that are $240 each. Uh, and you can see them in the, the picture below, but I put the picture up top right to see how they hang on those bars because it gives a, a, a better view of that. Now, on these poles that hold up the upper rack, um, you know, and I don't know if you can get them on the back poles if you just have the back wall, but you have these floating cooking grates. Um, they're the circular ones that you, uh, you know, have the those screws and you clamp them into place with the screws and then those are $195 each so extra grills that you can put or you know have stuff warming higher up with those cooking grates all right and a lot of fun accessories for mill scale too um with a lot of style you know a lot of rustic style uh that burger press uh for $80 on uh, the top left looks really nice um a little disappointed that these skillets were sold out maybe they'll come back uh nine inch and 11 inch 200 235 dollars on the website a coal shovel for 175 dollars and now we've got the choppa and it has a price with legs so that's how i decided that this is probably something that you could put on this open fire grill so the 11 inch chop is 165 then with legs 195 so you know put it on your open fire grill then 15 inches to 15 with legs 245 then the 23 by 15 is 235 then with legs 275 okay and then we have a very impressive assortment of fire tools 
Uh, if we go to the top there, the stainless long trio. So they've got those long shafts there. That's uh, going to be the shovel rake and poker 625, 215 separately. Then uh, the short trio 600. Uh, and you can get those 200 separately. They also have that hanger for those you know, utensils for $110. All of those are stainless steel. All, all the trio stuff and the hanger, all stainless steel there. And now it's time for charts. All right, so we're going to start off with price. We see the metals guys, $21.99 is almost the same as the Royal Fabrication. Of course, with more uh, tables and, a, you know, the fire burner, the log burner there, whereas uh, Royal Barbecue only has that one grill. Uh, Humphreys, you know, is $2,895, so that's a little step up. Uh, the larger steel belly is $4,000. Then you get... You know, something smaller than the steel belly, that mill scale four foot, and then the mill scale eight foot. All right. All right. Here we are with the table area in inches squared. Now, outer or inner is an interesting question. I think these are all outer spaces. So, like the actual inner space of the table basin where you have everything. I'm not entirely sure. Um, for Humphrey's Barbecue, uh, they gave me a figure that was 48 by 24. And then when I emailed back and said I, I didn't think that that was right, they gave me um, a different figure, 48 by 30. So hopefully these figures are right. A uh, little asterisk there. Uh, but we see that the Humphreys and the Royal Barbecue have the same dimensions with 1440 TMG, a little bit bigger, 1728 inches squared. Mill scale, uh, the smaller one, 1728 as well. So same size there. Uh, steel belly up at 2,592. And then, of course, the mill scale eight foot up there at 3,456. You can see the dimensions below at the bottom of uh, the bars there. All right. And then dollar per inch is squared. And so, you know, why those numbers from the previous slide are important is that they affect this. Uh, Humphrey's barbecue was like up at 250 and then they dropped down to 201. So again, asterisks, hopefully these are correct numbers. Um, take them as you will. But uh, yeah, we have the, the TMG there at the lowest, $1.27 uh, per inch squared. Uh, Royal Barbecue after that with that 153 and that without, you know, the uh, log burner, bracera, whatever you want to call it. Um, Steel Belly, 154. So right close there to Royal Barbecue with uh, more stuff on top of the table. Humphreys, 201. You got to decide, you know, are uh, the, the things that they do that make it unique. Uh, design wise is that worth that extra bit and of course mill scale up there at 204 and 305 um, so of course when you buy a bigger pit there's a sort of an economy of scale for the size so that's why the eight foot you know is is better dollar per square inch than the four foot All right, weight in pounds. Now, why did I make this one? See, the thing about weight is I could have gone around and asked everybody for a weight. Half the people would have guessed for me. You know, it's about this much. Um, it is not super exact. Uh, now, mill scale, they, they had these numbers ready. So I decided to put them up there. 700 pounds for their four foot and then 925 for the eight foot. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to compare that to this Odin Pro, which is the biggest, one of the biggest and baddest from, um, you know, Frigoni, uh, which is, I believe, the website, um, but, you know, the company that's, that's selling these here in America, and it is 473 pounds. So, it kind of gives you an idea of the lesser weight for, for this table that they have that's their largest table and sort of gives you an idea of dollar for pound 
what's happening here. So it's two dollars and four cents per pound for uh, the eight foot mill scale, three uh, point and five cents for the four. And I don't know what the others would be, but I imagine that they would be somewhere in this area near the mill scale, maybe better, you know, just because, um, but weight being what it is, mill scale might be the weightier ones. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that this Odin Pro is a whole lot more per pound. The thing about exporting something is that weight matters. You know, you're not going to get as much actual material in the end. And when things get put together, you know, that makes them so that they don't last quite as long usually than stuff that's welded together. Welds, they're, they're bonds, they hold, right? So just something I wanted to show you visually about why maybe buying something domestically, you know, buy American, right? Might be in your better interest in this arena. These are my thoughts on these tables. Um, I think TMG does a really great job of balancing uh, value with craftsmanship and innovation. To it more plainly, I think they make really good barbecues that are affordable. <laughs> and the coal mine is not an exception to that. Uh, the cage seems a little bit more geared towards a rotisserie mount than hanging baskets. And I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. Um, the baskets seem to be a little bit more my preference just because it. I feel like maybe they're a little bit more practical than the rotisserie. Rotisseries are great, but um, yeah, it's just just a thought there on my part. Maybe really like it, rotisseries. Um, but if I were going to be buying a table, I don't think I would cook large enough meals for that to make a big difference. I probably wouldn't even get the cage or the walls or any of that. I'd probably go really simple. And I'd probably go with TMG. They're closest to me and they have a really good price. So, all right. Um, but for my thoughts on Royal Barbecue, uh, I find the grate that's the entire length of the basin a little confounding. Um, and I know that they had a version beforehand that didn't have that. So it seems like a step away from the whole idea of versatility of live fire cooking, of you know being able to move the grate around. Uh, move different things around there. It seems a little constricting. Um, it's not to say that it won't work. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing about Royal Barbecue, they seem to come out sort of as a bargain live fire table compared to mill scale, sort of in their area of, of Texas there. That could be a good place to be, you know. Not everybody can afford mill scale. Some people can afford, you know, the royal barbecue now steel belly i think that there is a regional thing there with like the midwest if you're in the midwest that could be a really good direction to look uh if, if live fire tables what you want okay now could they make one with more of these bells and whistles that some of the other builders have you know you'd have to ask a lot of these places uh they'll try to build whatever you want them to build um, do they have the experience like the mill scale guys do? Probably not as much, but they're probably very competent, uh, you know, crafts people. So giving them a try might not be the worst idea, right? I like these things are super complicated to make. Uh, on the other hand, we know that these other builders do have a lot of thought put into their designs and experience making them. So it's up to you. Uh, Humphreys, again, regional advantage for the Northeast of the United States and up there near Canada. Uh, having said that, Humphreys is the only builder to make a cage that can be dismantled for travel. Um, I see a lot of innovation here for Humphreys. Uh, with that said about the cage, I don't think it looks as sturdy or eye-catching as the others. I think it looks more like a cage. <laughs> It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the wow factor that uh, some of these other cages and towers have. Just, you know, it's, it's a trade-off, you know? Do you want something that travels well? Or do you want something that looks really eye-catching? Um, a lot of other really cool features on this thing, too, though. Like, uh, 
to remove the basin, the ash grease drain, fold down basin wall. Um, you know, so I think they did put a lot of thought into this thing. And, you know, it's a, a solid choice. Uh, it can't be discounted, you know. Uh, and then you've got mill scale. And mill scale, they're a class act, right? They have a brand for exceptional quality. Their craftsmanship really comes out in this table, too. And if you buy the mill scale over at like the Royal Barbecue, the extra dollars can go towards something that's likely to last longer than the others. Not particularly because the mill scale might be better built, though it might be. Um, they design things in such a way that you won't generally ever find the product wanting, you know? There's a sort of simplicity to how they design things that is just, it has a sort of grace and panache that even in a hundred years, the classicness of it, it's not going to go away. It's always going to be there, right? Uh, the, their usability, it's going to be there. Oh, in a hundred years when the competitor's products are on a scrap heap in the scrapped yard, I think that mill scale will still be around. You won't be there to see it, <laughs> but, um, you know, and who knows Do you, if you want a, a pit or a barbecue or a grill to last that long or not, you know, maybe you're dipping your toe in the water here. This is, they say that this live fire cooking is a way of life and it's not a way of life that a lot of us have. It's a lot to jump into, really. It's exciting but it's also a lot. So who knows how far you want to dip your toe in into those waters. Those were my thoughts, you know, add your thoughts and your reviews to the comments. Do you have any of these live fire tables? You know, get on there, tell us what you think, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, thank you all for watching as always. You know what y'all, go get your smoker.